Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, up. Over there in Europe, up. Here in the States, boom, up, bam. That's right, Dow up over 160, Whew. way past that 23,000 mark. NASDAQ up, oil up, gold down. So what's going on here in the States is, well, those earnings numbers keep coming in, and they're pretty good. What do we got? 81% of the companies that have reported beated the bottom line. That's what they say here. And 73% of top sales estimates, according to Thomas Reuters. But the bad news is that earnings growth has slowed from the last quarter. But still things are up. And we heard from the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin. And he said... There's no question that the rally in the stock market has baked into it reasonably high expectations for us getting tax cuts and tax reform done. And if we don't get it done, quote, there's going to be a significant drop in the markets. So that's it on the markets. Oil, well, oil went up a little bit because... There's still problems going on over there in the Middle East. And production hasn't returned back from hurricane levels. So there's not much supply out there as there used to be. But we think this is temporary as far as the states go it is. But if conditions worsen over there in Iraq and the Kurdish regions, oil prices could go up. But right now, we believe we're at the top of the range. End to gas glut predicted. Who predicts it? Oil companies. <laughs> oh, what a, what a surprise. Now, we don't think the end of the glass glut is predicted. So basically, what they're saying is the supply-demand imbalance will equal out, and there'll be more demand than supply and the prices will go up. We don't see that. There's going to be more and more natural gas coming out. So, what else? Well, gold. Gold went down because the dollar's going up, and the new Fed chair, they're saying, is going to even raise interest rates even more. And as you all know, the stronger the dollar gets, the higher interest rates go, the lower gold. So gold's now in that trading range where it has a downside risk. If the economic data continues to come in as strong as it is because they're going to raise interest rates in December. And if it keeps getting stronger, they're going to raise them not three times, but four times in 2018. And that's going to be a hit on gold. And as I said, the numbers aren't that bad. They're not great. Industrial production in the United States rises moderately. And they readjusted the August decline, not as bad as they thought it was. And overall, year-to-date, industrial production is up 1.6%. Again, this is better than negative news. Not that strong but there is positive global growth rather than downward pressure, which we believe will come, but not right now. U.S. NAFTA negotiator takes aim at rivals. This is that guy, Lighthizer. And he's going after the Chamber of Commerce and big business that says that they don't want to renegotiate NAFTA because they're making a lot of money by doing these deals. But he's basically saying, we don't care. Quote, there's not an active process going on right now. 
We don't really have a plan beyond trying to get a good agreement. And he also made clear that any successful negotiation, in his view, will have to run roughshod over the U.S. business groups like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which have traditionally been the backbone of support for free trade packs. So, this trade deal is big, and it could be a big boost for America, too. It may hurt some of the companies, but it'll also be a big boost for Trump. Wall Street finds it harder to dismiss Bitcoin. Woo! That's right. It's getting to the point where we can't ignore the interest, the banker said. We don't want our clients to go near this stuff, but we will have to find ways to make it available if they keep asking. Regulators are taking a harder line over cryptocurrencies. A point underlined last week when J.P. Morgan, Chief Jamie Dimon, and BlackRock head Larry Fink said governments would crush Bitcoin before long. Hmm. So Bitcoin took a little bit of a hit, but it's still over 5,000. So too did some of the other cryptocurrencies. And again, this is not in the banker's interest because they make the banks obsolete. Will there be ups and downs, volatility? Yeah. Take a look in your Trends Journal. It's right there. We say what's going to happen, where it's going, and we're still positive on it in terms of it's not going anywhere. They also argued at the conference in Washington that the only real value of Bitcoin was a tool for criminals and money launderers. You know what that is. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. A cheap, desperate comparison and an analogy that makes no sense at all. The same reason they say we're going cashless. So this way you can't do that uh, drug running and money laundering. Yeah, that the banks are so good at doing. Huh? Yeah, you want to launder some money? Oh, talking about a very terrible thing happened in Malta. The woman that exposed the dirty deeds of these slimy creatures that the big cats don't have to pay taxes by sending their money offshore, the Panama Papers. She'd just written in her blog that the corruption in Malta was increasing and it was reaching ridiculous levels and how destructive it was. And less than hours later, they blew up her car and killed her. That's why they don't want Bitcoin because these two-bit crooks that steal trillions, I shouldn't call them two-bit crooks, I call them two-bit individuals, don't want this to happen, and they will do what they can to stop it. But again, it may have its ups and downs, but we see the future is crypto. The humble loan cheers Morgan Stanley and Goldman as glamour trades dry up. Glamour trades, gambling, and you know what the loans are? Third quarter figures from Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley yesterday topped analyst forecast boosted in part by financing of corporate takeovers and loans to rich clients. Isn't that nice? Loans to rich clients Corporate takeovers so the bigs could keep taking more. That's all this is about. Grow up. Both companies are best known for arranging complex trades for hedge funds and active fund managers. Great. U.S. tech groups feel heat on UK tax. Netflix and eBay, two US technology companies with millions of British customers collectively paid less than 1.7 million pounds in UK taxes last year. eBay has previously told shareholders it registered more than 1.3 billion in revenue in the UK in 2016. 
Yeah, they kill that woman in Malta. All these people are robbing us blind around the world and they hit us for every penny of our school tax, property tax. It's one big ripoff as the bigs rip off the entire global population. Yeah. Pitch to Amazon. Seven billion dollars. Seven billion dollars in tax breaks. Plus a couple of billion more if they open up in Jersey. That's right. And that clown Christie, that other disgusting piece of garbage, their governor, let any state go and try to beat the package along with what we have offered here in Newark, Mr. Christie said. Isn't that disgusting? Tax breaks for Amazon when this guy Bezos is worth nearly $90 billion and we got to give this guy a tax break. Yeah, we're going to create jobs for all you people in slave land here. Get a job at Amazon. Don't forget to go to college. Get your degree in shipping, packaging, and you know what else. And maybe you'll make $14 an hour someday. This is a disgrace. And they brag about it. Yeah, a clown like Christie brags about it. And he's a governor. One slimy piece of crap after another in a city, state, and country near you. Ah, Kobe Steele stock plunges nearly 40%. As scandal over inspection data deepens, Kobe Steele discloses more misreporting. Oh, misreporting. How about a bunch of lying son of a bitches? How about immoral bastards? No, Salenti, calm down. It's just misreporting. Don't you know? You have to be proper to be a big-time thief. Yeah, like those English are always proper. How they speak as the sun never set on the British Empire as they slaughtered millions around the world and enslaved them. And don't forget to bow to the queen and suck up to the king. It's a disgrace worldwide. And speaking about murder and crazy bastards... Eh, how about this front page story in the New York Times? Oh, what a beauty. Huge blow dealt to heart of ISIS as capital falls. And they have these people mourning the death of a family member. And then you open up this toilet paper record because they don't write anymore. They just put big pictures in there. And look at this massive destruction. Look at this massive destruction. Yeah, ISIS capital falls? No. They bomb and slaughter everybody. Any, this is what they call warfare. Just destroying cities and bombing them into oblivion. The stupidity and arrogance. Ah. ISIS capital Raqqa falls to Syrian militia. Ah, yeah, they got another piece of propaganda in this one. Yep. A commander from the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces waves her group's flag in the city of Raqqa yesterday as troops celebrated their victory over ISIS. Another place where they destroyed it and they got this phony picture of a woman waving this flag. U.S. drone strike kills 20 in Pakistan tribal area. None of the Suspected militants were identified. They bombed the house. Anybody suspected, you are a target for murder. We'll murder anybody we want. We're the exceptionals, the exceptional crazy bastards running and ruining the world. Ah, Pentagon, U.S. kills dozens in Yemen training camp attack. Oh, yeah, we know that was a training camp. It had a side out right over there. It said ISIS training camp. And you know that slaughter that happened over there in Somalia? That, of course, didn't make a lot of news. Only over 300 people were killed. And they're calling that retribution 
for the United States attacks that killed dozens of innocent people several weeks ago, including women and children that were farming. And this was a revenge attack. Nobody ex understands this element of, oh, you could go kill everybody that you want, but when they go back and do the same thing to you, how dare you? Don't you know that we killed all those people? Because we are the servers of freedom and democracy. And we back the dictatorial governments that listen to us. How dare, how dare you commit the same acts of violence as we do? You're not going to get close. We'll outdo you. We'll kill many more than you are. We are the United States of America, the mass murderers on the planet. And again, not a peep about peace. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News. <laughs>